Hi, my name is Omar Abdurrahman. I'm Associate Professor of Geomatics at the Gulf Coast Research and Education Center. In this presentation, I will introduce high resolution image applications in phenotyping and precision agriculture. Before I start introducing different applications where imagery were used, I would like to show a couple of platforms where cameras capable of capturing high resolution imagery can be mounted on. So in the left picture here, we can see a platform towed by a tractor in the field where cameras are mounted. And also in the right picture, we can see camera mounted on a drone. So those images can be used in different applications such as field scouting, growth monitoring, yield prediction, stress detection, and diagnosis. Now, in the coming few slides, I would like to introduce the main idea behind using high resolution imagery. And this is how to extract information, color information, and geometric information from these images that can help us to conduct our applications. Okay, let me start explaining how the image is being captured and created. We know that light is not only one piece. We can see on the rainbow that light can be dissolved into multiple colors. So a camera can be designed to capture different parts of this light, different, different colors. And in this case, we can see response from the plants at different areas of the light or different colors not only in the area that we can see with our eyes, but also in areas that we cannot see, such as the near infrared area, which is very, very valuable for plant studies. <clears throat> so moving forward here and to understand what is an image. So basically an image is an array of numbers. So what happens is that when the light gets into the lens to the camera, this, the light goes into an array of pixels that are sensitive to light, and each pixel would react producing a signal. This signal is measured and converted to a number. So each pixel that we have is basically a number, but it is visualized on the monitor as a color or as a grayscale. So this is very interesting because now we can manipulate these colors in order to analyze the images that we are using. And this is basically what we do in image uh, processing. Now let's dig a little bit deeper into our understanding of how to use images in vegetation studies or agricultural studies. Now each object can reflect differently. And for plants, they reflect very high in the near infrared area of the light and very small in the red area of the light. So the difference between the near infrared and the red response for a plant at a certain pixel in the image can be an indication of how healthy the plant. Healthy plants will give us very high difference and unhealthy or stressed plants will give us very small difference. So this is one way to study the plants and using the images and we can differentiate between healthy or non-healthy plants, or even we can differentiate between different types of uh, plants. We saw how to use colors and extract color information from the images. We can also use the images to extract geometrical information, like the size of the objects in the image, the size of the plants. And we use them based on the same principle that we see with our eyes, three-dimensional objects. If we capture the images that are overlapped with each other, we can analytically analyze these images, process them in order to reconstruct the geometry of the scene and capture three-dimensional information. And those could be different plant metrics, plant size, like the canopy height, the canopy size. And we can utilize this information also in our agricultural applications. After reconstructing the geometry of the scene using the overlapped images, we can create three-dimensional information and use this information to create one image mosaic of the whole field from individual images. And also we can create one image where each pixel represents the height of the object. 
and this would be our 3D information from the images to do our applications. Now I will present applications of high resolution imagery. So the first application would be to predict strawberry characteristics that are very useful for to help the breeding program, the strawberry breeding program. The second application would be how to use the imagery and information from the imagery in order to uh, model and simulate growth of the plants. And the third application would be to use the information for uh, yield prediction. So the experiment I will be talking about today, uh, it, it was conducted at the Gulf Coast Research and Education Center. And the experiment is related to phenotyping application. And phenotyping is, uh, is about extracting um, important traits that can be used to evaluate the different varieties that are being developed. So this is very essential component in, in breeding problems in breeding programs such as strawberry uh, breeding. So when we look at the, the site, so in this small experiment here, we have two beds that, that has multiple plots and, and each one of the plants in, the, in each plot represent different variety. And we would like to see if we can use the images to model and predict the information re regarding these plants that represent these different varieties. And those can be used by the plant breeders, for example, to evaluate the growth of the plants, the differences between them, canopy sizes, and many other information related to those new varieties that is, are being developed. So in our experiment, we use cameras, but we also use other information on the ground. So we use surveying equipment and surveying measurements in order to establish ground control points and those are points that are surveyed by GPS or surveying equipment in order to provide good control, good positioning control, so that when we produce the images, their locations are accurate. And we use the platform towed by a truck and the images are, and also navigation sensors like GPS um, is mounted on, um, GPS is mounted on top of the cameras on the platform. And we use all these information together in order to capture the images and then take the images and pre-process them. So what we captured or what we produced out of these images? Well, for each plant, we wanted to capture information like the average height of the plant, the height standard deviation of the plant, canopy volume, canopy area. So we can extract this information from the data processed. Uh, after processing this data, after processing the images captured by the platform. Uh, and then at the same time, in situ measurements were taken. So um, each plot is, the plants on each plot is taken out every week. And then, and this, uh, and then the, this plant is analyzed in order to measure the dry biomass or the leaf area. Those are very important characteristics of the different varieties and different plants and those are captured by or needed by the uh, breeding program. So we have the image data and also we have the in situ data and we have these for different genotypes and we have them for every week on the strawberry season. We developed a GIS, Geographic Information System or Geospatial Analysis uh, models in order to extract the information from the plants. What is the size of the, the plant? But we also needed to delineate the plants and we cannot do this manually. It's a very, very cumbersome job. So we had to do this automatically. So we developed the algorithms in order to delineate the canopies and also to extract three dimensional information from each canopy that is delineated. And we did this using traditional geospatial analysis and also using artificial intelligence techniques. So we use artificial intelligence, just providing the image, training the image, and then the computer will produce these delineated canopies automatically. Uh, extracting the three-dimensional information is very interesting too. We developed geospatial analysis models to do that. And what we can see here, uh, we can see three-dimensional views of the canopies. We can fly through the canopies 
they are very high resolution and we can capture as you can see here in the profiles the canopies and the height of the canopies not only the bits but also the height of the canopies so we developed the models to fill in the, what we are missing but after removing the canopies from the bids every week we capture the data fill it out by interpolation and then subtracting the canopies the surface of the canopy from the bids as interpolated and using this information to capture the three-dimensional information of each plant um, on the bed this is the results using artificial intelligence to delineate the canopies so we can see here all these canopies are delineated automatically so uh, we use the software we train the models in order to produce this uh, information Now, we also use high resolution images in order for plant simulations. So we thought if we were able to simulate the plants and produce images out of these simulated plants, we can cut on the cycle that we need to go in the field and start capturing images. So in the, or we, we can plan our image capturing to be at a time where it is the most useful. And this can be for disease detection, can be stress uh, evaluation and all different applications. So we use these high resolution imagery also to observe details of plants and model them and used software different. So we used the high resolution images of, a, of the plants in order to simulate them to see how the plants are being uh, created and how they are growing. And we use the information captured from the images in order to simulate the growth of a plant. So we can see in one column at the left hand side we can see the actual images planted in the field for one variety and in the right hand side we can see the simulated plant for this variety at the same age and this is very interesting because we can use these uh, these simulated plants and we can study the, the behavior of the plant we can even create our own synthetic images that reflect the behavior of the plant so let's take a look at how the simulation works. So this is very much accelerated growth of a plant that is simulated. And as the plant is growing, we can capture snapshots and those are the snapshots that we are seeing in the figure to the right. All right, so uh, moving forward, we had to compare analytically what we got from the simulation from what is uh, being produced um, uh, in reality. So uh, we actually measured that and we saw that a good fit of the parameters that we were able to extract from the images, just the images taken in the field using the tractor, uh, something like the canopy size, for example, and what is being simulated, which is, which is uh, provide evidence that this simulation can reflect some of the reality and they can be used again to create synthetic information that can help us planning for images when to capture images what is the behavior of the plant under different stressors we also use the same type of information uh, in order to predict yield so we collected information about the yield and association with the size of the canopy, not only the size of the canopy, but we had other information, something like the 
yield from previous uh, week, for example, or previous couple of weeks, and uh, the weather conditions. So we used all this information in order to. So we used canopy metrics extracted from high resolution imagery in building strawberry yield prediction models. And we can see in this slide different models with different variables included, including the canopy metrics that we extracted from the images. And we can see that including these canopy metrics, size of the canopies improved the model goodness of fit. Now, what else we can do? We can do many things with these and with this information. We can use these canopy information extracted from the high resolution imagery spectral or geometric in order to do many other applications such as uh, disease detection or any other type of stress detection and diagnosis thank you so much i'll be happy to answer your questions